Hey guys, um, welcome back. So I've just got home from work, um, well not long got home from work, and I think I'm sort of running out of daylight. So I don't know how much I'll get filmed today, um, but I just thought I'd update you quickly on the front lawn. Um, so you can see there the colors coming back really, really nice. So I put some two spec elevate down because I know that that gives really nice quick up front hit um, and a nice dark green color. I've still got lots of grassy weeds um, and it did get most weeds, but there's some that sort of, I don't know, they look like they could be hanging on. So I'm gonna hit it again. I'm not gonna film it. Um, you've already seen me spray weeds. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna apply Javelin again. So you can apply those sorts of products um, 10 to 14 days apart. Um, but this episode is going to be sort of my last one, um, not last one, <laughs> that's awkward, uh, but it's going to be my last sort of video um, in preparation for the lawn renovation that I'm hoping will happen next week um, if I can get my life together. So today's episode I'm going to show you um, some new purchases. <laughs> So these ones came up in an auction, so I've been looking for um, like a, a scalping mower, a dedicated scalping mower for quite some time. I got rid of my old Honda and I got a new Honda 216 and HIU 216 and I found that it actually doesn't go very low and I don't really want to modify anything and do anything super dodgy. So I've been looking for something sort of like these or like um, I think Brenton from the Aussie Lawn, he's got like a little Victor thing, it looks amazing. Anyways, these came up in an auction, they've got the Honda motors on them so I was sort of like, hmm, might keep an eye on those. So then, um, you know, one thing led to another and I was bidding on two in the hopes that I might be able to um, win one. So I got two of these and I thought, well, that's okay. Um, that actually might make for some good YouTube content. So I'm going to clean these up. I'm going to service them um, and sort of get them all up and running. I'm going to use one of them on my spring lawn renovation and I don't know what I'll do with the other. I'll probably sell it or I, I don't know. I don't need to. Right, so I'm gonna just spray a bit of um, I don't know, degreaser or CT18 or something on them, um, wash them down, spray it again, wipe them down, just get it nice and clean so that um, probably tomorrow now, because I'm losing sunlight, but probably tomorrow I'll come out and actually service them. afternoon um, these have been cleaned up I guess enough um, so what I'm going to do now is service the motors so the first thing you need to sort of do when you're looking to service a motor of any type really um, just make sure you check the user manual so it'll actually list um, the part numbers so there's sort of when you're servicing a motor there's three main things that you're doing so you're replacing the oil you're replacing the spark plug and you're replacing the air filter. What I'm gonna do first and foremost is drain the oil. So I'll move this stuff out of the way. Before you drain the oil, however, um, it's good practice to warm the motor up. Um, so what that does is just sort of decreases the viscosity of the oil. So it makes it like more like a liquid, so it's not like a honey. Um, you know how oil, it's sort of hard to drain if it's like a sort of honey viscosity. So you want it to be thin and thin it out and you do that by heating it basically. So I'm gonna run these, if I can get them running, I'm gonna run these for a couple minutes. You don't want it super hot obviously, um, ouch. So you just wanna run them, warm them up and then 
Yeah, then we'll start draining the oil. Oh, ouch. It's at this point um, that you're going to start working on the motors themselves. So you want to disconnect the spark plug lead, um, so it sort of so it can't start. So here's the fill hole. Um, so I'm going to show you, like I said, two different ways of doing things. So if you don't have anything, you can get an old bucket. This is all I had lying around at the moment, and you can literally drain it out of the dipstick hole um, and just like tip the mower and put it straight into that um, so sort of keep that aside somewhere clean should have probably got a nice rag first but um, so you just tip this over you want to sort of lean it to make sure it's actually going to land in there. Oh, <laughs> that looks delightful. Um, so you'll notice that the air filter is pointing to the sky, um, which is what you want to do. So whenever you, you shouldn't really be tipping a mower, <laughs> like if you're doing that regularly, you're doing it wrong. Um, but you don't want to tip it so the air filter is sort of on the underside and the reason being the oil will flow in um, through the air filter and then you'll need to replace your air filter, clean the whole thing out. So don't do that. Always make sure that if you are going to tip um, your mower at all for draining oil or anything like that, you tip it towards um, the oil fill plug, so towards the sort of dipstick um, and you keep the air filter to the sky. So you can see that was like... That was pretty, that was pretty gross that. So as I said, I'm gonna show you two ways of doing things. So um, so the reason you sort of wanna warm that up, I don't know if it catches it on okay, camera, it probably doesn't, but um, that oil's sort of just dripping out of there nicely, whereas if it sort of wasn't warm, it might not do that. So these things, I put this one in because it's, it's like tapered at the end so it can get right to the end. Literally, <laughs> and you literally siphon it like that, it sucks it up. Um, there's other sort of pump ones that are more like they're cylindrical. I think Repco sells them, they're really good if you're a commercial operator or you got multiple, to be honest. Like that's, you don't need to purchase anything and you can do that. You can do that with any, I would do it that way, but it's less taxing than this. All right, so that's the oil drained. Um, yeah, it's super gross. Um, so usually what I do is once, once you sort of fill with oil quite often, you'll empty the container and then you can put this old oil in that and then go take it to one of your waste centers and dispose of it um, correctly. So next step would be to remove the spark plug. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in. You should probably actually remove the spark plug first, but <clears throat> yeah, you don't sort of have to. Okay. Oh my gosh. Holy guacamole. So it's as, it's as simple as like you take the old spark plug out and you put the new one in, so. They don't have to be super tight. There's usually a torque spec. Um, yeah, that, that one was way too tight. All right. Um, 
Um, and then the last thing we want to do is replace the air filter. Um, I always do it last. I don't know, just out of habit, I guess. I feel like at least if anything goes wrong, like nothing's going to get on the air filter and damage it. So I just do it. Yeah, I just always do it last. Actually, that one's not too bad, but they're cheap. Um, and that and that's the thing with these parts is that, yeah, you, you can sort of reuse them and everything like that. But like. The spark plugs are the spark plugs are about five or six bucks. I mean, all up between the spark plug, the air filter, um, and the oil, I reckon that would cost less than twenty bucks, or around twenty bucks. Um, so these these types of air filters have like a foam filter. And then they have also a paper filter as well. I think it's like a pre-filter is, is what they're called. So a lot of them sort of have that sort of setup. If you have foam filters, you can quite often... Get in my friend. Yeah, you can quite often reuse the foam filter because you can actually clean them at least. Um, but again... I mean, the way parts are going at the moment, it's so cheap, you just, you might as well just replace it, to be honest. Usually you would go by the manual um, and you'd put in the recommended amount. There's, these ones that have like a dipstick with a level of where the oil should be at, so I don't, I think I'm just gonna fill it and then check. <laughs> Now we're just going to fill it with nice, clean oil. Just let that sit for a bit. So this one. So I've just shown you like two ways of, of removing the oil, I guess. There's not really two ways of changing the spark plugs or air filters. Um, but what I will show you soon is I'll sharpen the blades. I might be able to show you different ways of doing that. Um, so what we're going to do is have a look at the blades and I'm going to show you the different ways that I go about sharpening them. Um, in all honesty, for the most part, um, mower blades are so cheap that I would just replace them um, but I know that some people do sharpen them and I like to sort of sharpen some as well especially ones like this that don't get worn out super easily they just get blunt um, so yeah I'll show you how to sharpen them uh, but you can also purchase brand new um, might be easier just so underneath you've got um, your blade carrier or your blade holder you can remove the blades individually, like you can take them out. Um, I prefer to just remove the whole thing. I find it a lot easier and then you can usually sort of clean up around the disc as well. So, oh, I should mention, I've already disconnected the spark plug lead. You never ever leave that connector. If you're working on a mower at all, it's the first thing you do, disconnect that. And sort of see, um, I've got like a little, you can see the angle there just, um, but that's what we're going to sharpen. So these, these have plenty of life left on them. Um, so that's why I'm just going to sharpen them. I'm not going to replace them. Okay. So this is sort of the two options, um, that I use. So We'll start with this one. So this is just um, one of the flappy discs, one of the flappy sanding discs um, on an angle grinder. Really, really quick, sharp, uh, <laughs> really quick way to sharpen your blades. 
Second option is if you get yourself one of these um, sharpening kits, that's if you have a rotary tool um, like a Dremel. Um, I love these things, They're, it's so handy. It's as quick as that, so that, that one's sharpened, so that's the Dremel. So here um, on the left hand side is what I sharpened um, with the angle grinder and on the right hand side is the Dremel. So you can sort of see the differences there. The angle grinder with the flappy disc, I mean honestly it probably gives the better result. So that's the process I follow. I still need to clean these up but um, yeah I ended up just going with that angle grinder finish. I think it just gave a better finish. Now a couple of a couple of important points obviously follow the angle that is already on the blade so there will already be a slight angle on the blades make sure you follow that don't try and cut a new angle or anything like that. The other thing is they don't need to be razor razor sharp like you're, you're not trying to cut your own finger or anything you got to remember they're on a on a petrol powered mower um, you know centrifugal force will probably do most of that. Um, and finally, you don't have to actually apply much pressure. So I was hardly doing anything then and you should have seen it was like two or three passes and they were done. Um, so you just want it so that they look nice and neat. There's no big indentations or sort of cutouts. Um, hopefully that's showing up on camera. Um, next step would be, if, you, if you're getting real serious and you, you probably should do it, but I'm, I'm sort of just eyeballing it. Um, but next step you can do is actually weigh these. So you want to make sure that if they're all the same mass, um, then you're not going to get any sort of imbalance in your mower. So that's also something that you should look into doing. Um, I'm eyeballing them and I'm pretty happy, pretty happy with how they look. Um, so YOLO. But you just put these back on the same way um, as taking them off. You just um, reverse the process. The only other thing I'd mention is I like to use some sort of anti-seize um, on, the, on the blade carrier bolts just to make sure they're a bit easier to get out next time. Uh, it definitely saves you a little bit. If you don't have anything like that, just use some oil or grease. My probably big takeaway tip um, for this episode would be a lot of people tell you to service your mower in winter and while that's a really good idea and especially for people who have actually have a winter, um, while that's a good idea, um, I'm of the thought that the best time to actually service your mower would actually be during your spring renovation. Um, and this is why. So when you are scalping your lawn with your rotary mower, so with blades like this, a normal mower, what happens when you scalp the lawn is you're, you're putting it through under a lot of load um, and it's cutting a lot of material off and your blades will get really, really blunt. Now a mistake that a lot of people fall into is they'll then put that same rotary mower with those same blades straight back out onto their grass once it's grown through and then we start to get a little bit of rain, a little bit of humidity and then they wonder why they've got fungal outbreaks or fungal diseases in their lawn. So just a reminder that a good cultural practice for um, reducing fungal disease in your lawn is to have sharp mower blades. Um, so. My Bundy Big Play is for you to actually sharpen your mower blades while you're waiting for your lawn to recover and come back up through your top dress. And that means that when you do get your mower back out onto the lawn, you're giving it a nice clean cut and you're sort of reducing disease pressures on your lawn. Um, and I think, I think that's it. So thank you so much for watching guys. Um, I hope I've at least showed you sort of different ways of doing things. Servicing a mower is actually quite simple. Um, not that I'm saying don't support your local mower centre if you don't have the time to do it or you're not confident, that's fine. 
Um, but I just wanted to put it out there because I think a lot of people would probably be surprised by how simple it is to just do it yourself.